Yo what's up guys welcome to my humble youtube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. Oshi no ko x tensira by Stacha ple chapter 14 rising star 2. Ruby looked at me with a hint of nervousness. She looked back and forth at me and Shiranui. What is she so fidgety about? So, um, how did you and Shiranui san meet, sis? She mentioned something about taking you away. Her curious gaze seemed to resemble a huge fan's. No, she is. A huge fan of Shiranui san, that much I can tell. Oh well, it wouldn't hurt to explain. You see, Aqua and I were attending a celebration party for sweet today one thing led to another and she invited me out to dinner i talked with her for a while and guess what ruby looked at me anxiously what i got a role to act with shiranui san for a promotional video isn't that cool of me i suddenly felt the urge to brag this sudden unfounded sense of confidence is sticking around like a bad habit ruby's been silent for a while and i don't know what she's thinking i bet she's excited to hear that i'm going to be acting with her favorite actor I see. That's great. EHH her expression isn't what I expected. She's smiling, but it's not the excited kind of smile. It's the look of someone who's just seen her idol's biggest secret. You um, Ruby? You okay? Ah, uh, yes, I'm okay. I was just so surprised. Ruby's body jerked a bit when I tried to call her. She's back to being all nervous now. The way her eyes were fidgeting around made her suspicious, but I digress, she has her tastes. Words could not explain how badly Rimuru misunderstood Ruby's expression. Aqua, we're back. Why do you look so drained? Aqua was sitting on a bench with Shiranui and had turned all white. Shiranui had been asking Aqua all kinds of questions, to Aqua's surprise. She was unexpectedly talkative and quite extroverted. She asked all kinds of questions, ranging from, How do you handle being siblings with two gorgeous beauties? and many more. Thus, Aqua was reduced to a dehydrated mess. I never knew you could be so talkative, Shiranui san. Oh, was I being too nosy? I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. Aqua gave a rather polite retort to the aloof Shiranui. Rimuru wanted to burst out laughing, but she tried to hold it in. The willpower Rimuru was currently displaying to hold in her laughter rival the warriors. Aqua, I hope you didn't get too excited talking to a beauty like Shiranui san too much. But it was merely for a fleeting moment, you bastard. Aqua's cold gaze didn't phase Rimuru. Rimuru needed to toughen up since she let her own mouth slip up. It resorted to who would cave in first. Seeing this, Shiranui san asked another question. You guys sure are close, what's it like being triplets? Aqua seemed to fade away, you already asked that question, Shiranui san. Oh, I think I already asked that question, I'm sorry. Excuse me. My phone is ringing, I'll answer it real quick. She quickly apologized and moved away for a bit to answer her phone call. Aqua had the look of enlightenment for a split second before glaring back at Rimuru. Rimuru glared back, not wanting to back down. Ruby just observed the silliness. Shiranui returned a few minutes later. Are you guys always doing staring contests? Anyway, Rimuru san, I just got a call saying we needed to go to meet the choreographer right now. Are you busy? Rimuru and Ruby were shocked to hear Shiranui's words. E.H. That's quite sudden, why the sudden change of plans? Our choreographer just arrived and can't stay in Japan for too long. Director Seiji said that we should start our practice as soon as possible. Rimuru looked at Shiranui and pondered for a few seconds. All right. This school does adjust to the schedules of the students in the performance arts program. Shiranui smiled with a look of satisfaction. Excellent. Producer Kaburagi told me that our choreographer is the one picking us up. Um, Rimuru. Good luck, Ruby offered Rimuru encouragement. Rimuru smiled and patted Ruby's head. Thank you, Ruby. I'll do my best. Aqua gives Shiranui a deep look. I have a feeling things are gonna get complicated. In truth, the questions Shiranui asked Aqua were mainly about Rimuru. Aqua and Rimuru knew of each other's past selves. So they treated each other as brother to brother rather than brother to sister. Aqua couldn't say the way he treated Rimuru since it'll probably shock her. Rimuru, try not to attract too many difficult characters. Outside the school was a scarlet red car. 
The person inside waved at them, which meant she was the one who was sent to pick them up. The person who picked up Rimuru and Frill was a tall blonde woman. She was gorgeous to the point of thinking of her as a supermodel. And yet, why did she personally pick up these two? Producer Kaburagi sure had some interesting ideas. So you're the two I'm gonna teach? You two look frail, to be honest with you girls. Her character was strong too, she spoke loudly and confidently. Don't worry, we're quite athletic, Frill rebutted her words. Is that so? Well, that's good, I wouldn't want to overwork cuties such as yourselves. I'm gonna say this now, you aren't allowed to back out. Back out? I don't know what you're saying. Frill didn't back down. Rimuru was impressed at how unaffected Frill was by the blonde woman's words. The woman herself was impressed at Frill too. Now, it was time for Rimuru to show her dedication. What about you? She said as she looked at Rimuru. Are you as determined as her, or are you too afraid to speak up? Rimuru gave the woman a cold smile that sent shivers down her spine. Afraid? You must be joking. I'm going to give it my all. She found the two as excellent. I believe you were told that I'm your choreographer, but I'm more of a martial arts instructor. Your producer told me that you were gonna do a promotional video for an anime, correct? Rimuru and Frill nodded. You were gonna do the fight scene, so you need to learn how to fight, especially with weapons. She stopped the car and pointed at a gym. We're gonna be teaching you guys how to fight, so be prepared. Oh and, my name is Yuki Tsukumo, remember it well. Rimuru and Frill got ready and changed into the clothes Yuki provided. They were currently at a specialized gym that was reserved in advance. Yuki had a few trainers ready and some staff that were going to be involved in the promotional video as well. The training props brought were gigantic, but they were made with the lightest possible material so Rimuru and Frill could lift them without too much difficulty. Rimuru's prop was especially large, so she was gonna need to get used to it. All right. We're gonna train your footwork first and foremost after you do your warm-up exercises. How are the props, are they too heavy? No, they feel quite light, is the real thing going to be heavier? Rimuru's sword was lighter than she thought, Yuki found it amusing to see Rimuru effortlessly lifting such a huge prop. No, it's not gonna be much heavier, how about you, Shiranui? Mine are considerably smaller than Rimuru's, so they're not a problem. Wonderful. Let's start then. They began doing warm up exercises to avoid any injury from an unprepared body. Now that they were standing, Rimuru and Frill were considerably smaller than Yuki. Both of them found Yuki to be slightly intimidating when they were up close with her. After doing warm up exercises for a good 10 minutes, they began the footwork choreography, or as Yuki would call it, training. Both Rimuru and Frill were excellently following her moves. Yuki smiled to see such fast learners for the first time in a while. She took it up a notch and started moving faster, this time with coordinated movement. When Hoshino moves her foot forward, you move yours backward, Shiranui. Try to imitate a dance, and coordinate your moves to display grace and elegance. What's important for you guys right now is to display grace and elegance in the way you fight. She was on point. They needed to attract the attention of the viewers, so they needed some sort of point of attraction. A powerful yet beautiful display of their fight would attract a lot of customers. Some might even watch the anime itself to compare the fight in the anime to the one in the promotional video. Wait. You're doing it wrong, Hoshino. Your expression doesn't match your role. Panting, Rimuru looked at Yuki and asked for advice. Then, would you be able to give me some advice? I haven't seen the whole anime, so I don't know what my character is all that well. Yuki pondered. Let's see. Think of Saber Alter as someone who's lost her way. I think that might be the quickest way to put it. Rimuru looked puzzled, she was thinking quite hard about how to act her role. Yuki tried to think of something else. You could think about it like this, what would you do if you lost something important to you and you weren't able to do anything about it? You ended up doing something drastic. And you couldn't cry, since you have become a monster at heart. Rimuru, who had her back against Frill and Yuki, merely nodded when she heard Yuki's words. After a short break, they began to practice again. Yuki immediately sensed something had changed. Rimuru's expression darkened considerably, she hadn't expected Rimuru to change this drastically. Something's wrong, but I don't want to step in. Her change in her act is so different I can hardly believe it. This wasn't what I wanted her to act like, but I couldn't help but watch. Right now, 
All Rimuru and Frill were doing was essentially moving their feet and hands. They weren't holding their props yet, but Yuki wondered if she made them use their props right now, what would she see? Change of plans, I want you guys to use your props, get ready. She told the trainers to be on standby just in case. Rimuru and Frill were in the zone. Both actors were on the level of the best of the best. Rimuru remained unknown to the trainers who were observing them, but now she was proving herself to be on par with one of Japan's top actresses. From the way they held their props alone, Yuki could feel her excitement burst through the roof. Begin. They weren't lying about being athletic, that's for sure. It wasn't even time to film, yet the atmosphere these two had created made everyone silent. They couldn't help but stay silent. When they saw the two fighting, it hadn't even been two hours, and yet the two were already showing Yuki a worthy performance. Rimuru's hold of her blade prop made her seem like she'd held a sword many times before. The same could be said for Frill. Their reflexes were fast, they probably wouldn't need much editing except for the special effects. Yuki was told that the promotional video would be different from how the fight in the anime would go, which was expected for a live adaptation of the fight. She was told there wouldn't be a clear winner shown in the fight. I've been told how powerful this, Saber Altar, is, so Rimuru would need to show a dominant display of the fight. I was planning on asking Frill to try to be on the losing side on purpose, but I didn't even need to say anything. Rimuru was overpowering Frill. Whether it was a difference in physical and athletic abilities, Yuki couldn't tell. She hadn't told them yet how they needed to appear in the promotional video and yet they were showing exactly what the higher-ups wanted to show the fans. If they figured out what the higher-ups thought and are acting knowing all of that, then they're truly genius actors. But if not, X. T. C. H. Caliber. Rimuru did a big vertical swing when Frill was in an awkward position. Before Rimuru's prop hit Frill, the trainers and Yuki herself held Rimuru's hands. All of them had a look of bewilderment. Their bodies moved before they could think. Even though the props were made of materials like plastic and designed to not hurt the actors, Rimuru's deadly intent made them move unconsciously. Frill herself believed that if Rimuru's sword hit her, she would have been gravely injured. But that wasn't the case at all. Rimuru's sword would bend if it hit her head. The trainers couldn't scold Rimuru that much since they knew what the props were made out of. They realized that their bodies moved on their own. Yuki was speechless, she couldn't move an inch. Frill didn't feel anything negative after they calmed down. Rimuru was as apologetic as anyone could get. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Frill couldn't help but laugh. Ahahaha, no need to apologize so much. If anything, I'm glad you honored me with your best capabilities. I want to make this as amazing as possible, especially with you. Her positive attitude towards Rimuru was amazing in a way. Thank you. I think that'll be enough training for today. Is it all right if we go home for today, Yuki-san? Yuki went up close to Rimuru's face. Rimuru turned extremely red. In her heart, she was a dot. A close-up look at a beautiful woman would make any man flustered. Quote dot dot dot. It's strange. How can such a small girl be so talented? Excuse me. Rimuru was confused, but Yuki decided to play dumb and let them go home. You guys showed me something great today. I'll drive you guys home. Rimuru and Frill expressed their gratitude. Thank you very much for the lessons. Been a while guys. Hope this chapter was enjoyable to you.